So there you have it. You have this new brave revolutionary government trying to make everyone equal, right? With what? With force, right? Government needs the tools, which are what institutions, as we'll see later. So, <coughs> but the question is, who is this everybody? Right? Who is this everybody? Because remember, before, right? What was the situation? There aren't, you know, strict borders in the sense of, you know, I can't come in from here or move out or move around, right? Enter into different spheres of uh, power. Remember, next to them are what thousands of Germanic principalities, each with their own ruler. So, I, you know, circulation here was go. Oh. So, <laughs> then who is going to be this population, these people that are all going to be equal under this powerful state? Well, the French nation. But what is the French nation? How do we define it? Well, France at this point was in the fortress situation of existing, of having had, as we've seen throughout these centuries, yeah, of having had more or less coherent sets of borders, in the sense of the same reach for the for the ruling dynasties. Right? So the simplest thing then is to say, well, whoever is inside, <laughs> whoever is here, is equal. Which means a definition of what? Of, of borders as a way of defining what? Nation. But what happens then to the Germans? The Germanic presidents here, you know, later you will for, they will, there will be a German. Well, how is Germany formed? Because there never has been a Germany. What is the criterion? Well, as we will see, when we discuss the concept of state and the concept of nation, which are different, different, that there are various ways of defining this new reality of what? Of the nation. So ironically, right, the French Revolution invents both the democratic concept of the nation understood as what? Understood as citizenship. And again, which are two different concepts. And what is citizenship? Citizenship is the relationship between the individual and the government. And it's also the French Revolution that invents the, na the, the territorially based, or reinforces, rather, right, this principle of sovereignty of a territorially based nation slash state. Why? Because it had this, all these historical circumstances that allowed it to do so. Well, did, how did the people respond? Did they want to be a part of this new reality? No. So how did the state, the new state, respond? It forced them. There were genocides here, the famous genocide of Vendée. They didn't want to be French under this new regime, right? The, in the next century, actually, a famous book uh, is called From Peasants to Frenchmen. Uh, and it describes how during the 19th century, this is around 1800, so for the next 100 years, this new strong French state, in order to enforce equality, will also enforce what? Frenchness. And it will use two major institutions uh, uh, that it had as tools, the educational system which was run by the state, and the military which was run by this new state, with universal conscription, meaning that everybody had to go through both institutions. So it used these two institutions that it controlled to churn all the population through them, and here in these institutions they will be made Frenchmen. This is why the book is called From Peasants to Frenchmen. Because they, it's there that they learned both the language, actually, the, the dialect that was the official French, yeah, and also the stories, the history, right, the myths that would say, no, no, we're French, and we, you know, we come from here and go there. The nation, nationality, nationhood is, is, in, is constructed. And as you see, it's an, it's, a, it's an intersection of many factors, including the political factor. To conclude, just to do a brief review, because I know it is a lot, and if, you're, uh, if, if something is not clear, you're more than welcome to raise your questions in the new discussion section, and I'm happy to clarify them, um, to bridge the gap that is, you know, um, uh, not being able to talk to you in person right here in the classroom. <coughs> so to just to conclude, what is, how did we get today to a world of states? Well, remember the maps of 
the ancient times and up to only a thousand years ago. Or map of uh, look at the map of North America before the formation of the you know, with the expansion of the colonies. The North America is the whole table, only this part was United States. Right? So, what, what does this mean? If you look at the ancient maps, you have all those white areas and a few colored spots. What were those colored spots? Is, is it the only place where people live? No. If this is the world, they were, human beings lived not in a state of nature, they were always organized in a way or other. But these patches are our projection backward, our trying to identify these colored patches, versus Egypt or Babylon. We look back in history, we try to identify political constructs that are similar to the ones we know, that are well organized, right? Because th these political constructs create order and they also produce goods. They build things. This is why we know about Egypt, because they built things. Well, you need an order, you need a civilization. Civilization is maintained by a political structure. So you will look back and try to identify these things that left marks. And they left marks because they were order and persist, ordered and persistent enough to leave those marks. So you have what? You have a center of power projecting that power in a wide world. You know, play, uh, uh, this is the world, this is Egypt. And the rest, you don't see these this projection of power. Political building grows, right? This, this process of building political entities. Then you have the Greek city-states, which are what? Attempts to build political order based on their constitutions, right? Their ideas that, remember when we talked about Plato and Aristotle and so on, you know, their idea of the world. And then, with Christianity, things change. It, and when we focus on Western Europe, uh, because it's the origin of the modern state in many ways, of the model, right? Then we have, let's say, the Middle Ages, the feudal times, you know, the Renaissance and so on. So we have the ancients, the projection of power patches. Then in the feudal times, what did you have, right? You had, in Western Europe, you had a coherent civilization where your identity was either local, or it was local, either local or maybe class-based, you were a priest, you were a noble, whatever, uh, you know, and if you were a noble, you had, your family had specific rights and duties, which didn't depend on the king, by the way, you know, were inherited, or it depended on which city you lived. That, those were the identity parts. The political, your political relationship, your political identity depended whether you were a peasant, or a priest, or a noble, or, or a knight, or a military man, Here's the sword, you know, whatever it was, right? Your actual identity was a part of a network of sort of a personal relationships, right? That's the vassalage system from the noble, a baron, a king, right? And why did you want this connection? Is because they offered protection and you gave them services, right? But overall, this did it matter under whom you you were? Well, no, it really mattered what were your see what was your situation? Not a peace. You wanted to prosper, probably you wanted to be uh, to do well, whatever. So it didn't matter. This is why, you know, territories, borders, quote unquote, changed because different rulers took projected this system of connections, projecting their, projected their protection over different territories. Why did you have some of these, however, maintain a constant format, whether whether France or maybe this? whatever, Hamburg, the city of Hamburg. Well here maybe it was because you had a dynasty that was coherent enough and strong enough to maintain a continuous control and people enjoyed it and they created a culture that accepted this. Here you have maybe a bishop who was the local figure of authority and it's because the seat of the bishop doesn't change, that creates con continuity. The dynasties were the way to create political stability. Right? And this is why when someone died and lost the, the throne remained empty, that was a reason to fear because the, the, the chain, the link of continuity was broken and anyone with any other distant relative could come and claim the throne. Dynasty was a way to maintain, dynasty marriage was the constitution of the place. Were these borders, how solid were they? They weren't, again. They, they, they just related to the projection of influence of power of the ruling, maybe the monarch, maybe the ruling class, the nobles, there were countries like Poland that had, 
had, uh, had been ruled by nobles, not by the kings. They had a king, but the king was elected. Right? So whoever was in power is how much they, they, they projected. But this all changes with reformation, it all changes with, with the emphasis and the uh, think lock on individuals and rights and representation and the principle of democracy, like people ruling themselves. It changes with <coughs> the wars that have ravaged Europe, literally ravaged Europe. You know, so much so that one in three persons would, were just killed in this area uh, in, during the religious wars, right? So, um, so then you have the principle of sovereignty that is enforced, meaning that let's, let's agree on certain borders, not because they represent something, but just as a way of not having so much conflict. Because if you don't set these in stone, there's always someone who wants to push them, right? And that, and that world also changes radically, and I gave you the example of the French Revolution, but it's a process that happens throughout, this process of rethinking the state, rethinking it as the state of the people, right? As a democratic or egalitarian uh, state, and and that I gave the example of the French Revolution, and it will happen in different ways in different places, but it's kind of the same process. The irony of the process being that, in order to create everyone equal, as I said, make everyone equal, you have to <coughs> for to create a, a, a central authority, a government strong enough to make everyone equal. And that's strong. And who is that? Everyone what is whoever the government decides it is. Who is the citizen? Who decides who is citizen or not? The government. The rules are set by what? The government. So it's, it's ironic that a democracy brought us the strong central state. Because you were actually much freer in many ways in, 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 in the previous forms of organization. Because you didn't have a state breathing down your name. Now, I'm not saying it's better, but because you know, this brought peace. Right? But understand that you didn't have, you didn't have passport. Like you didn't have to have a passport to enter an exit. Now, uh, and thus, today, we have a world in which every single piece of land, imagine that, every single piece of inhabitable land in this whole world is assigned to a state. From all that, world which was still inhabited with white patches and only centers of power, every single part of this world has been assigned to a state. Are those states actually functioning? Are they nations? They are not. They are not. So to, uh, what we will do next in the next video lecture is we will look at what does a state mean? What does a nation mean? What is nationalism? And to be sure that we make this differentiation, to understand that these are distinct realities. Because today, as I said, we live in a world of states, but not actually politically in a world of nations. That's, those are two different distinctions. And then we will talk about what is a political system. That will take us to examining uh, various types of political systems in the current uh, political world. So first, we'll talk about the building blocks of the political world, which are what? States and the other important concept which is that of nation. Thank you and see you next video lecture.